作ってみかありがとうございます。Thank you very much. The very first speaker or、uh, in that、uh, survey that we had this morning. Cultural, culture and art would be important for Tokyo was、uh, what the majority of the people felt. I think we need to change the values and culture.、Uh, as uh, Nicholas uh, advocated at the beginning,、uh, to make Tokyo where only the autonomous uh, cars uh, would uh, drive,、uh, that、uh, would require. The changes in the values. And as Sputniko indicated,、uh, how、uh, can we provoke people to think about culture and technology? I think we have about half an hour for the panel discussion.、Uh, we didn't do any planning, and yet I think this session went very well. So this is just、uh, like good urban planning. Uh, if the environment is right, I think things would work out. In the charts and the presentations, science, engineering, art, I think they were all incorporated in your presentations,、uh, but I think、uh, your venue was kind of different. So, Spinnico addressing values uh, uh, and art. And、uh, Fujimura san uh, uh, in the actual architectural world, and、uh, Benjamin in the art world,、uh, coming from different backgrounds. I have a question for you,、uh, for all of you. Fujimura san, you talked about buildings, infrastructure evolving, or the buildings evolving. What kind of algorithm? Did you use? How do you、uh, transition into the next version? Actually, you set up rules in advance not to jump, not to branch out, and not to go back. Those are the three rules that I set for myself. Which would be the rules to go into the next version? So let's say you look at the models, and designer、uh, would、uh, try to solve one issue, and you iterate that. Uh, and when you put all of them together, you would see a sequence. So the computer like algorithm、uh, was、uh, performed by humans. Is that something that you learned from computers? Yes. In the 90s, the artificial intelligence、uh, was trying to emulate humans, whereas the thinking by Google and others today is that、uh, by Uh, uh, the human activities, like looking at some interesting、uh, websites,、uh, are considered as a,、uh, like a work of a machine, and you put them together. So we don't want to jump, we don't want to branch.、Uh, it's a very simplified version,、uh, rules, but、uh, when you put all of them together, You get a very rich output. So it's like the opposite of what David was doing.、Uh, like learning from computers and organisms. Of deployment, which was, I think, the, the sensors、um, that you're going to deploy in New York. But are you fundamentally trying to impact the world through, sort of, if you were on that graph, on sort of through art and.、Um, Um, the perception side, or、uh, in how much of it, for instance, looking at the work that Fujimura has done, because it's a lot of work to sit around a town hall and talk to a bunch of people who, who don't want to change. I mean, it, wh where, where, where do you deploy?、Um, it's a good question. I mean, I, I, I like your,、uh, your graph quite a bit,、um, but I guess. You know, the, the graph of the different realms, you、mm -hmm. know, between the art and science and design.、Um, I'd like to think that our projects are trying to engage at least two of those all the time. So sometimes I frame it slightly differently that our projects are, are prototypes, but they're prototypes for a big idea. Or to put it slightly differently, You know, we sometimes think that we're, we're trying to be futuristic and utopian like some of the、um, 
uh, speculative design conversation, mm -hmm. but we're trying to explore that through functioning prototypes. Mm -hmm. So we're being utopian, but we're also being immediate and raw and working with what we can actually build and what works and engaging some of that engineering mm -hmm. to make something that might be small in terms of size, but that we think engages um, a big scale of being able to have impact. So I, you know, in a way, maybe I'm bet between you guys, um, you, you know, but I think I aspired for the projects to have a relevance like on the scale of the skyline of the city, mm -hmm. you know, so the project, you know, in New York City with, you know, all of that mm -hmm. small scale technology of a mm -hmm. muscle or an Arduino mm -hmm. is really about um, what our public skyline should be like mm -hmm. and, and what kind of information mm -hmm. might it give us and what should the lights of the city mm -hmm. be communicating. And so I, I guess, you know, I actually, I, I take it as a compliment that you would um, frame some of the work as art because I think sometimes I'm in danger of becoming too involved in the engineering details. But I think I, my aspiration is to be that combination to affect something like, um, you know, values and the culture of the city and how we gain information, what the what the city should be like, who it should be for, what public space should be. I know that's a complicated and, and, answer. And, I, and I, I hate to continue to use this metabolism metaphor, and I don't mean this in a derogatory way, but, but it, it seems like, the, like if you, for instance, MoMA, and the people, like, we understand that, but probably the kids that were drinking beers sitting in front of it don't understand the full impact of your work. And, yeah. um, or, or the engineering, the science. And it feels like, for instance, Fujimura-san could probably learn a lot from your materials and a lot from your algorithms, and then probably Sputniko could take the context that you've created and make it sort of digestible um, to the, the public, you know, and, I, and, it, and it seems like your output is, could be their inputs and their outputs yeah. can be your inputs. And yeah. they, uh, they, uh, no. So I'm going to switch to Japanese. So I have a question for Sputniko. Design fiction, speculative design, in that kind of work, Steve Jobs and others often say, uh, if you ask everyone what they want, you can't create. You can only do the incremental design. And I think Fujimura-san, uh, you uh, will come up with various ideas, and you will look at the reactions. But I don't think you would convert their input as is. Uh, Sputniko, when you develop a documentary that you showed us, for example, are you trying to lead people's uh, values? Are you going to try to push people into one direction, or are you getting the feedback? In other words, how are you trying to design the culture when you don't know uh, what's going to happen? Like, you don't to push something into a direction is not the kind of thing that I do. I don't try to push discussions in a certain direction. So it may be a platform or opportunity to discuss that is provided. Now, if it's uh, I couple that can create children, then the idea of coming up with a documentary is probably the first of its kind in the world. And this is the first time something like this is on television. And this is something that involves everybody, and yet, if this is going to be discussed and decided upon, there is going to be a tremendous impact. For example, when it comes to the uh, pills for contraception, it took over nine years for this to be approved of. And among the uh, UN nations, it was one of the last nations to approve of the uh, low dosage uh, contraceptive. It was only North Korea and Japan that uh, had not approved it uh, to the very end. But then for Viagra, though, there were 193 death cases, and yet the Ministry of Health and Welfare approved of Viagra in uh, six months, even before the uh, low dosage contraceptives. 
So in regard to what kind of uh, pharmaceuticals are launched onto the market and so on, these are things that are decided in a very closed conference. There are quite a few people who apparently wanted to use Viagra. So with this kind of an approach, I have the feeling that there should be more wider debate. There was a new uh, professor, Iagro One, who came in, and uh, he talked about autonomous driving. And he's been talking about autonomous driving. And what was announced yesterday was that when statistics were taken, the majority of the people felt the following. It's an old philosophical problem. Uh, do you hit five persons, or should the car swerve to kill one person? Should the driver allow himself to be killed, or is it necessary for the driver to avoid five persons? But uh, there's, who would buy such cars? And when it comes to the choice made by people about a car, a, a duty to make the choice is morally incorrect. But uh, computers can mandate the choices. So it becomes complex. If your child is injured, let's say, and uh, sp is speeding in a car, The police, if they stop a car, would uh, allow a child who's injured to be transported by an ambulance very quickly, but a computer would not. So how can human values be embedded into a uh, computer is an issue for autonomous driving. And uh, this will impact things. It will make changes. And so for IVF, 30 years ago, there was talk about the insurance issue. And there's going to be tremendous changes as a result of autonomous driving. But I'd like to take a question from the audience after posing some questions. So please prepare any questions that you might want to ask. So finally, what I wanted to ask everybody here was, in regard to David's first picture, there were many loops that were connected to each other. And if it's a single loop, it may be too simple. And uh, in the citric acid uh, cycle that I showed, there are thousands or several tens of thousands of uh, metabolisms that interrelate. Some that are familiar to us are complex systems. If something is done, then you can't predict what will happen in the first survey. People talk about the fact that the future can be predicted, and yet, as you can see from economics, it's quite difficult to actually do so. So when people talk about design, we are manipulating complex systems. And in such circumstances, we're not certain about what is going to happen. But I'm sure that everyone is feeling that they're in a complex system. But to what extent do you feel you can exert control to your designs? And with what kind of attitude should you have to involve yourself? So the relationship with complex systems is something that I'd like to ask about, if you have any ideas about this. For example, if Tokyo is scaling down, I think that it's not simply that. And you've touched upon that element. For example, the infrastructure in Tokyo may be better, so it's easier to make apartments and you may have more childbirths. There are unanticipated consequences. So because there's more childbirth, you create removable children's rooms, but then you may have three children. There may be unanticipated consequences. So how should we perceive adaptability in that light? Oh, yes, indeed. There's a difference between the 1960s and today in the sense that the planning for the 1960s was based on long-term planning for five years ahead or 10 years ahead and uh, combining various different elements for both the city as well as for architecture. But mm, those uh, predictions are no longer viable now. 
and so there's no correct answer and so elite designers have been empowered to make the de decisions but it's difficult so you may not know whether something is correct or not but there may be a certain prediction that exists so the issue is just simply whether a consensus can be reached at or not and in regard to a functional prototype to be made and also the public space there's much that I can empathize with that. Now, when it comes for a public space and a functioning prototype in that space, uh, political issues are unavoidable. And so, in metabolist activities, what was the relationship with politics is something that I'm very much interested in. For example, uh, uh, Kenzo Tange's uh, city planning for Tokyo. Now, Tange is an architect in the 1955 political structure when there was a lot of uh, uh, investments made and the idea of making a Pacific Belt or to make a concentrated investment into an industrial built happened to correspond with the vision of Tange. But when it comes to metabolist uh, concentrated vision, uh, the LDP, Liberal Democratic Party, uh, vision is becoming more distributed. And so there's the disparity between the city and the agricultural areas. So there is a mismatch with the political situation. And uh, this cannot be detached between architecture and politics. Right now, the, those two sides are now approaching closer. So there are political divisions, and then the architecture designs are coming in. So they're looking at the uh, architecture and design, uh, procuring the consensus. That's a perspective that I like to look, look at. Is it really the, it so happens that way, or is it lucky uh, opportunity? Well, it so happens that the Japan has modernized, and then the, it is the aging society, so the timing. Uh, were really the, were the same, and here the political situation after three, uh, the, uh, 11, uh, meaning that the Japanese uh, the, uh, the tsunami and the earthquake disaster, uh, that the, a lot of things are happening here in Japan. So Sputnik wanted to talk about it, but it's not, it's not actually new. Jean Jacobs has uh, talked about it in New York. That is, the next session is about the microbiology, and then actually it is being uh, used uh, or the, uh, the, the, the top-down plan doesn't work so well. But here, the Roppongi Hills, right here we are. It is actually well functioning, relatively speaking, as planned. So therefore, there are design city in MacArthur Street. It's now being created, and then a lot of big, uh, say, streets uh, Belt and then top down and bottom up, both approaches are really required. In that sense, uh, this city is actually hybrid, especially Lopungi Hills right here. We are creating a community and a lot of happenings taking place. In a way, it is an ideal plan being realized. And here, recently, what I think is that being an artist, and, and I was uh, in a club culture. Uh, I am still in a club culture, but still, um, a lot of friends are, in a way, the rough people, but still, recently, there's a loophole in Top Down, and I was called to take part as a cool Japan uh, council in 2012, and Mr. Edano, who was a minister at that time, asked me uh, what Sputnik thinks about it. And I was thinking rather I was out of place in social media and the internet oh, goes without th saying that uh, those things, that there was a hacking space, meaning that uh, uh, the person like me who's making that biophysiological uh, machine or something like that, uh, that and I, there was a movement uh, looking at uh, television. So there's a hybrid, uh, say, pores uh, that uh, you can actually hack into. I, I'm sorry, I'm making uh, abstract comments. Yeah, um, I think it's. I think these are these are great answers, and I think it's a great question. I mean, to me, the maybe the um, 
the question about how to deal with complexity, and maybe also, to me, the, the question about how to balance the quantitative and the qualitative, which is probably in your original map, and it's in the work that both of you guys are doing. I think those two questions are some defining questions for our times, certainly for design, but I think even for our times in general. Like, how are we going to deal with complexity? How are we going to deal with this quantitative and qualitative, like all of these conditions? And I think you offered a, a great answer about the panel, which is to say you design the conditions for things to happen. You know, you design the, the, the parts of the city for things to grow and shrink. You design a city so that there can be happenings and culture. You don't try to design the culture, but you try to design that. And I think that framework um, is really interesting and helpful for us to think about design in the future. And I think we're barely starting to, to do that, any of us. And I think it would be good to turn more attention to it. In other words, get used to designing with uncertainty, designing without complete control, designing rules and relationships like you talked about rather than final fixed outcomes or final fixed forms if we're architects. Um, and then there's one last thought I have about it that there's a, a really nice framework to me um, called anti-fragility. And so, you know, roughly speaking, that is um, that rather than trying to um, design and imitate systems that resist stress and damage, or even if they're resilient systems halfway um, uh, you know, along a transition, so resilient systems might be said to repair after stress. But rather than that, there are some systems that are called anti-fragile systems that get better with stress that somehow um, are designed or exist in a way that they actually thrive on those unknown conditions and they thrive on that um, stress to the system. And it, it's a little abstract, but you could think about human bone as one example, you know, to bring it around back to biology. But even just conceptually, human bone is, is something that needs to be stressed if you don't exercise, your bones will start decaying. And as you stress your bones, they get stronger where they need to resist the stress more and they get you know, uh, weaker in the other areas. And I think those kind of systems, thinking about how could we design anti-fragile systems or is it even possible, is a good framework for starting I this think, discussion. I mean, to go to the other extreme, um, Sputniko doing this documentary on NHK is stressing the culture, which is going to yeah. make it stronger. Um, and I yeah. think that immune systems are similar, and I, I think cities. And, and so, yeah. so I think that that anti I would use the word um, self-adaptive complex systems. But, it's, yes. but I, think it, I think that that's how you build. So I think you're right. I think resilient is too limited. I think we actually want Tokyo to get stronger every time it gets beaten up. You know? yeah. um, and I wonder if we have any questions? Simon, nanka komento? Do we have any questions from the floor? If you have, please raise your hand. Don't be shy, please. Something good will happen if you are the first person to raise your hand. We'll get something really great. We'll have something great happen to you. Something wonderful will happen to you, right? You're right there. Um, I'm good at this. I'm an architect. My name is Sekino. Thank you for the very interesting talk. Now, metabolism, I think. Uh, in the 1960s was uh, a, a very precious uh, movement uh, in architecture in Japan. Now, in this time and age, uh, where we have the biotechnology, the issue of computers, SNS. So everything is different uh, from before. But I think what is quite important is the issue of scale. <laughs> 
So we're looking at the very uh, minute uh, details from cells. It connects all the way uh, to the cities. So within that uh, wide range of scale that humans uh, uh, can relate to, uh, I think that the three panelists come uh, from different scales. For well, those who do architecture, I think they uh, start uh, thinking from an architecture perspective. But uh, let's talk about the uh, uh, Golden Street. If you uh, start from a city, then you look at the metabolism of the city is different from the metabolism of architecture. So there's that issue of the difference in scale. And uh, in thinking about this uh, problem, I think that is quite an important factor. That's my view. And uh, I want to ask the panelists uh, what they think about uh, uh, this uh, issue of scale and what they think about it. Thank you for the question. I also do architecture. And when I think about the issue of scale, metabolist, well, they, can, they could access the large scale transcending uh, that uh, scale because they were involved in the political issues. I think that uh, played a major role. And uh, what are the national uh, issues of the day? Uh, what are the political issues? You have the concept of the uh, architecture must fit that consciousness uh, perfectly in order to overcome the issue of scale. So with depopulation, shrinking of city, I think it's quite important that architecture presents some kind of model. If you can't provide uh, an answer, solution to that, people just say uh, architecture is useless. So architecture, uh, rather than positioning uh, that as a, a cultural uh, issue, I want to uh, look at it from a political perspective. I would just offer, I mean, I think that's a, it's a great observation. And I think, um, I think from my perspective, um, architects and other designers, um, and you know, potentially artists, maybe, um, should get more comfortable addressing multi-scales at the same time. Um, and, you know, so I already see that happening, so it's not a dramatic statement. Um, but I think, you know, one, one thing that I'm just reflecting now, kind of for the first time, is that maybe just as architecture um, often involves collaboration, almost always involves collaboration, different expertise in terms of structural engineering, mechanical engineering, design, you know, urban planning, you know, environmental impact is now becoming more common. So there are these different roles and players. Maybe we should also think about different expertise and different players in terms of scale. So now just as every architecture project should have, you know, the structural engineer, the architect, etc., maybe each project should have the expert at the small scale, the DNA scale, or the molecular scale, and the expert at the kind of material scale, human scale, and then the expert at the, if we're sticking with architecture, the building scale, and then the city scale. But even bigger than that, I think we're getting more aware of in, like planetary scales, like the flow of energy and resources around the world that are required to make anything from a phone to a building to a street. And so maybe, maybe it's just another framework that our, our kind of collaborative teams have to get bigger and, and we have to engage more kinds of expertise in, in these questions. So the issue of scale, I was thinking about that earlier. So ideas uh, that transcend scale, that's become quite easy because you have the smartphone. For example, in Adachi Ward, Adachi City, where they uh, gathered the rappers in Adachi Ward and uh, they organized a bus tour. The Adachi City office organized that. So the local government and uh, rappers, they came together and uh, they had a tour uh, of major locations in Adachi uh, explained by uh, the uh, rap. And uh, they accessed that uh, rapper community through the smartphone. 
Recently, there was the iGEM in Boston. It's like a biological Robocon. So high school and university students uh, compete uh, in uh, genetic modification uh, in some competition. And on Twitter, so I wanted to look up whether there are Japanese students. And I entered iGEM in Japanese. Uh, and there were many user icons. And there are all animation icons, anime icons. So Japanese students that come to iGEM, they all like anime. So that was uh, a discovery that I made at that scale. That's not written in Wikipedia. Uh, Japanese uh, iGEM participants like anime. That's not in Wikipedia. So it's become much easier to access that unique uh, scale if you know uh, uh, how to uh, get to it. So I think with smartphones in architecture, you can, uh, I think, work in various scales. At uh, the media labs, when we hire professors, we uh, invite them to do a lecture. And uh, when Sputniko made his lecture, I was sitting next to Nicholas, and uh, Sputniko talked about the rappers in Adachi, and he said, doesn't make any sense. What's she talking about? And uh, so we must hire her. So that's the difference. So if there's some talk that you uh, uh, cannot understand at all, then you invite him to the media lab. So that's how you stress the media lab to make it stronger. So I think that's the uh, uh, gene that we have at the lab. And I very much appreciate the stimulus. And uh, this uh, question, I think, uh, connects directly to the uh, uh, theme of next uh, panel, next uh, session, we're going to uh, look at uh, 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 microorganisms, uh, well, thinking uh, at all levels, all scales from uh, mic uh, microorganisms to the city level. So I think the answer to this uh, uh, question may come, uh, may appear in the next session. Uh, maybe we did this, uh, or maybe ask that person to uh, pose that the question intentionally, but that's not so. But we shall uh, explore more deeply in the next session. Thank you very much.